Hello everyone, I hope your day is going well, and welcome to this episode of Krimbrich's Guide. Last episode we went over the steps to create the armature of the puppet, and this episode we're going to finish off the puppet with all the nice felt and make it look all fancy and cute. Let's go. Once again, I'm not a professional, this is just stuff I've learned from experience in book learning, so feel free to change anything up if you want. So for this part you're going to need your armature of course, felt or plush fabric in all the colors you're going to use including skin tone, clothing, and any other accessories you plan on making, cotton or polyester stuffing, spools of thread that match your felt colors, a sewing needle and sewing pins, scissors, yarn for the hair, and your hot glue gun once again. Oh, I should mention, this tutorial needs you to know how to sew, and I don't really know how to go about teaching that. So, y Google's pretty good. If you need some specifics, we're going to be using the running stitch, the overcast stitch, and the invisible stitch. I learned these names like two days ago, so they might be wrong, but hopefully they're not. Alright, first, using your original drawing for your armature, draw out patterns for your puppet's torso and legs. You may take some experimenting to get them to fit around the puppet nicely and snugly, but eventually you'll get something that works. We'll be using the skin tone felt for the torso since we'll need to have the little nubby hands and neck poking out from under the shirt or other top type attire, but the legs can just be the color of the pants since we won't be seeing anything under them. I, unless... Unless you, you want to for some reason. So cut out the torso pattern and pin it to the skin tone fabric so it stays in place while you're cutting out the necessary pieces. You're gonna need two pieces, one for the front and one for the back. Once you've got both pieces, you can sew them together with a running stitch on each side, starting at the hip and stopping at the side of the neck on each side. Once you're done, turn the pieces inside out to hide the seam better. Now to get it on the armature, we'll actually need to cut open the back and slip it on like a teeny tiny snuggie. Then sew the back using the overcast stitch. It doesn't really have to be very fancy since this seam will be covered up with some kind of clothing, like the shirt, or in this case, a green hoodie. Now that you're done with the torso, you're gonna do a similar thing with the legs, cutting out the uh, legs pattern and using that to make the two pieces of pants. Then sewing the sides together with a running stitch and turning those inside out. But remember not to sew the crotch yet. We're gonna... We're gonna leave that for later. Now this is where it gets kinda tricky, since we're gonna need to sew the pants directly onto the puppet's torso. So use the overcast stitch to attach the pants to the torso and then sp spread the puppet's legs so, so you can get to the crotch easily. God damn it. Anyway, sew up the middle of the pants with an invisible stitch so the seam will be hidden as much as possible. And the pants are done, but we've still got some room on the feet or shoes if you prefer. So we'll need to cut out a fairly thin strip of black felt and wrap it around the feet to measure out the two pieces. Then go ahead and sew them onto the pants and you're good to go. Legs are all done. But if you're worried about your puppet having a wardrobe malfunction such as this, you can use hot glue to stick the shoe felt directly to the epoxy underneath. And then you're done. But... But it still doesn't have a shirt on, so we, we, gotta, we gotta do that. It's not polite. But first, we need to do the head. Weirdly enough, this step actually doesn't involve any sewing, just, just gluing. Lots of gluing. You can use some of the yarn you've got to measure out different widths of the armature's head so you can make the two pieces of fabric fit correctly. Getting the right shape may take a few tries, but keep at it, and eventually you'll get something that works. Once you've got the two pieces of the head figured out, glue the center of one piece to the center of the back of the head, and then tightly wrap the felt onto the head while gluing from bottom to top, then do the same with the front. Hopefully this will move all of the possible fabric wrinkles to the top of the head, which is okay since you're gonna end up covering it with hair. Unless your character's bald, in which case you might need to figure something else out. Unless you're okay with head wrinkles, then... Woo! Speaking of hair, that's what we're gonna do next! Now unfortunately this is probably the most tedious part of the process since you need to glue each strand of hair individually to the scalp. But hey, I mean it could be pretty relaxing if you do it while watching TV or YouTube videos. That's what I do at least. So take your yarn and cut out copious amounts of small strands for each strand of hair and you can begin gluing them. I recommend starting at the hairline and then slowly making your way up to the swirly thing that people have at the back of their head and giving your puppet a haircut to the proper length as you go. Eventually you'll end up with what you anticipated and you could finally give them a shirt. A SHIRT! So to do this, if you're making your shirt, you can draw out a slightly larger version of the torso with the arms cut off to use for sleeves instead of arms, obviously. And use what you've just drawn to cut out the two pieces of the shirt and sew them onto the puppet with the invisible stitch. If you want, you can sew in little designs and whatnot like the Markiplier M, but if you do, remember to do it before actually sewing the shirt onto the puppet, otherwise it gets really hard. And now you're actually finally done with your puppet, and now you can- Wait. Hold on. Hold on! <laughs> okay. 
Okay, there you go. Now you're finally done. Now, I know there's actually not really any facial features except for the eye base, but that's because those are removable for the purpose of animation. We'll get into that later down the line. But anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the future. Thanks for watching, and take care.